Hi friends, my name is Tiffany and I am your Pamper Chef Consultant. So I am super excited that you guys are here for a live Pamper Chef show, um, right for the comfort of your own home, watching me um, show you guys a couple of the new products and different things that I do in my kitchen. So this is pretty exciting. You guys are one of my new groups that um, are allowing me to do a show like this. So I appreciate that first and foremost. And our lovely hostess for being a guinea pig um, with this and letting me jump in and give this a whirl with everyone's busy work schedules and just family life um, and the craziness that goes along with all of that. So we decided that we would go live tonight and show you guys a quick cooking demonstration so that you can see some of these products in action while you put your feet up in your own home. Maybe you're sitting there in your jammies or your comfy clothes and you have a beverage of choice in your hand so hi um, give me a um, like a wave or a hi take a, a selfie of what you're drinking um, let me know what's going on and I'm gonna start um, how I start every show by of course thanking our lovely hostess for having us all here tonight so thank you so much I see you're on um, for having us here and I really appreciate it um, I'm gonna go over a few of our major uh, collections that we have. Um, yeah, too bad it isn't um, smell vision. That would be awesome. Um, I'm going to go over some of our major collections first and tell you some of them. And then I'm going to show you um, how I cook dinner about two or three times a week using the, these very products and all that. So if you're already on the video, watching the video, tag someone to come in and catch the video, someone who's already on the event, you can always add people to the event so they can catch this either right now while we're doing this or on the replay because it will stay right there on the event. But I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and um, start talking about some products. So first off, let me tell you a little bit about some cookware. Our cookware just got a facelift. So here is our nonstick grill pan. You'll notice maybe it's missing a little something over here. There's no handle. So um, they changed up our cookware a little bit and actually it does have a handle, so don't, don't be scared. Um, but they added this little piece of handle right here so it makes it easy to grab this side. Of course, when it's hot, you're gonna wanna use um, your mitt to do that. Um, but our handles come off. So they're interchangeable on all of our cookware and it makes it really easy for storage. Because think about when you have to store this much in your cabinet, that's a lot. But when you only have to store this much, it's really nice. So you can stack all your pots and pans up and put all your handles inside there. That's really awesome. So tonight we're gonna use the single burner grill pan. Um, we have a single burner and a double burner. Um, I love them. Uh, my children are 11 and 13. We cook quite a bit of protein during the week. They're active in different activities. Um, I realize that if I um, don't have protein, it's more work at dinner time. Like, what are we gonna make? What do you want? But if I already have a decision made, it's a lot easier and a lot smoother. So you might have seen one of my previous posts in the party about prepping your vegetables for a salad bar. In conjunction with that, you um, probably saw a bowl of chicken in that. Um, picture and that's what I'm gonna show you tonight is how I do the chicken um, to get ready for the week so um, I shop a lot at Kroger um, and at the Kroger in the Kroger section like back where the chicken is the Kroger brand of chicken this chicken is always $1.79 a pound and this is over five pounds so it's just over five so it's less than ten dollars and this is kind of what I do every week I buy this this package of chicken and I'm going to show you the steps I take to get this chicken ready and either cook all of it cook half of it freeze half of it or whatever so I really really like um, the tools that I'm getting ready to use they are some of my favorites so buckle your seat belts, put up your feet, um, grab that beverage and let me show you how I do this. All right, so let me move my bag here. And um, before, while I'm getting the chicken ready, I'm gonna take our grill pan and press. The press um, has the grooves in it too. And I'm gonna put this um, on the stove top just like this so that it can get the pan hot with the press in there as well. So it's gonna bring both of them to temperature together. So let me put this over here. All right, and then we'll come back over there in a few minutes and I'll show you when we put it on. 
If you hear little feet, I apologize. My dog is going a little wild right now, but we are pampered, not perfect up in here. So you may hear a t teenager come down and say something. You may hear a cat meow. You know, we just got things going on. So um, I just grabbed my kitchen shears. I always just open up the chicken package um, with the shears. And I'm gonna admit to you guys, I hate cutting up chicken. It's just something about the way it feels. I'm just not really like into getting this stuff ready, but I know that it is essential to get us through the week to have this protein ready to go. So I usually just grab each of my big old breasts. Okay, so these are big. This is one of the reasons I like them. It's because they are pretty big. So I take my shears and I just kind of trim them up. So. You know, depending on how picky you are, you uh, may trim off more than I do. Um, I know some of you are saying, Tiffany, they sell already trimmed up chicken breasts in the store, but how much are you paying for those chicken breasts? Give me a guess below on what you're paying for um, the nice cleaned up chicken breasts, for the already flattened or thinly sliced chicken breasts, how much you pay for just the tenderloins, not the whole breast. Um, give me some guesses down there, all right? So I just clean up each breast and I just, I'm putting the like little remains in back into the carton. So one thing I always cut out is that funky little like tenderloin tendon thing that's right there. And when I use my shears, I'm a little bit more precise than I am with a pair of scissors. So I didn't waste so much of the chicken when I did that. But look at that, that's a nice big breast and it's clean and ready to go. All right, so there were a total of five breasts in this package. Um, that I'm cleaning up here. And you know, some of you may have small families or smaller eaters, you know, um, I was, I've been there, I've done that. And like, this is a lot of food. So like you're thinking, oh, that one breast could feed like two or three of my small children. And then my husband and I could split one. That's totally fine. But buy the five pounds and be more economical about it. Okay. So I've got, um, this is like I said, this is what I do once a week. Um, depending on what day I do grocery shopping, um, I tend to shop a lot during the week because I'm doing Pamper Chef shows on the weekends and that's kind of how I choose to run my schedule. So I like to go shopping Monday or Tuesday um, during the day while a lot of most people are at work or whatever. But yeah, I see that little yuckiness that's all in there. That's what I'm cutting out. I get rid of that tendon tenderloin thing. So sometimes I have to ask the Kroger guy, is there any more of that $1.79 chicken left? So um, you can notice there was a couple people circling the counter today when I did that because they were also waiting for that $1.79 chicken. So I did cut up, you know, that little bit right there. Some of you may save that. You may like that stuff on your chicken. I choose not to. If you have like, maybe you have a, a dog or something that you'd cook that up and maybe like mix it with rice um, for them to have um, something like a special dinner snack kind of thing. All right. So let me, you, you got a good view right here on my chicken breast. And I've got five right here. So next up is the closing cut. So if you were looking through the post earlier, I told you that the closing cut was something that I was like, I'm never gonna use that. But let me just wow you here, okay? So I've got a seven inch knife. This is a piece of our forge cutlery. Okay, so with our forge cutlery, it is a full tang knife, which means it goes all the way through. It is one piece. And um, actually this is the, I'll find the other one. I've got so many knives over here. I don't know what where they all are, but this is the seven inch um, chef's knife. This is you need at least a seven inch knife to go through the closing cut because when you look at the closing cut, it has the diameter of it is you need at least a seven inch knife to go through there. Okay, so I'm gonna take our chicken breast and I'm gonna set it down in this closing cut. So let me just move that so you guys can see that. All right, so these are like two little trampolines so that when you push on them, they go back and forth. So that's why it's great to put your chicken breast there because it's gonna line it up exactly even. Also, um, the fifth most dangerous thing you can cut um, in your kitchen is a bagel because people tend to hold the bagel like this and then they cut it and then they cut right there in their hand and they end up in the ER because that's a really sensitive piece right there. So this is great for bagels. If you've got the young kids and you need to do like cut up a bunch of grapes or cut up grape tomatoes, you just slice them right in there. They also, the grapes slice like that, freeze them, make really good ice cubes in your wine if you so desire. All right, so I'm gonna take our chicken breast. I'm gonna slide it right there and I just kind of squish it. As you can kind of see, I'm kind of fitting it right in there. And then I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna set it right here on the edge, and I'm gonna close this. So as my knife is sitting on the edge, it's, almost, it's a little bit in there, I'm gonna squish this down with my left hand, and then I'm gonna go back and forth, and I'm gonna fillet our chicken breast. Look at that, let me show you both. 
So you've got perfectly filleted chicken breasts, right? So they are nice and even and perfect. So um, they're gonna cook faster because they are thinner. Um, that also helps so they don't dry out when we're cooking them. And um, it's gonna, they're gonna stay nice and juicy. And they're just gonna, um, they're gonna grill up really nice. So I do this to all my breasts. Now tonight I'm not gonna grill all the breasts, but it's really nice if you go ahead and prepare all the chicken that you're gonna need, clean it up, fillet it, and then I've got myself a Ziploc baggie out here. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze half of this um, so that I can um, have some in the freezer for a later point in time. And um, sometimes I go ahead and grill it all, but I'm trying to keep you guys your time kind of just to 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna grill half of it tonight. All right, so there I took the five chicken breasts. I filleted them all. That comes out to 10 chicken breasts. But guys, these are still really decent sized chicken breasts. Okay, so think about it. if I had five breasts, that was five pounds. These are still each a half a pound a piece. So pretty good. All right, so this is the hand that I don't, I'm not touching chicken with yet. And I got my Ziploc baggie. And I'm just gonna go ahead, put my cleaned up and filleted chicken breast right on in my, that one's, I like the, these little bit smaller ones that we're gonna do tonight. And we're gonna put these right on in here. Let's see how many is that, four. All right, I'm gonna cook four, and I'm gonna cook five, and I'm gonna freeze the other five. All right, I'm gonna set that over there. All right, so then I just take a nice even layer of our chicken breasts, and I just put them on my flexible cutting mat, which is what I'm using tonight. All right, and they're layered out right here to go. Now let me grab my seasoning. We are gonna use tonight, let's see, what did I say we were gonna use? Oh, I think I left it in the other room. Oh no, we're gonna do Chipotle. Okay, so we're gonna do Chipotle chicken. So this is the, um, the seasoning that we're gonna use. We're gonna do a little Mexican flavor um, because we're gonna add this to some chicken later this week. So there's our Chipotle. I'm probably gonna eat this up tomorrow. And I'm just gonna season the one side with the chicken. Notice I'm using the hand that I did not use, touch the chicken with. And I'm just seasoning up the one side. Gosh, this smells so good and I haven't even cooked it yet. All right, so I've got this seasoned up. Okay guys, I don't measure. I'm a really bad measurer when it comes to cooking. I just kind of coat it until it looks good. Um, but you could definitely measure with a tablespoon if you wanted to. All right, so then I take my cutting mat and I'm gonna take it over here to our grill. Now I'm gonna bring you over so you can see what's going on here. All right, so let's grab you guys so you can come over. My cameraman and camera girl are in bed, or they should be. So that's why they're not here to help me tonight. A lot of times if you see my other videos, you'll notice I have some help. All right, so um, the press is heating up. Now the, the heat does conduct up through this handle. It's not super duper hot yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the press off. Okay, this is nice and warm. Um, I'm turning my heat down, okay, because it's gotten nice and warm with the press and the pan is hot, ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is, this is, a, this is my hand that had the chicken, and I'm taking the chicken and I'm putting it seasoning side down. There's no oil or anything like that. It's just the chicken, and I'm putting it seasoning side down. Now, with my non-chicken hand, I am grabbing our seasoning, and I am gonna season the other side. So this is how I do chicken all the time, like once or twice a week, and I'll season it, like I'll do one round that's chipotle, I'll do another round that's garlic and pepper, a crushed peppercorn and garlic, I'll do another round that's southwest, another one that's bell pepper, just to have a variety, but it makes dinner easy when you have the protein done. So I'm gonna take this and put my press on just like that. You guys watch that for a minute while I wash this hand. All right, so we just leave the press on there like that. Now the interesting thing with protein is when you are cooking with protein, what happens between the pan, the press, and the protein is it creates a suction. So right now, if I go to pull this up, like I'm putting some, some good pressure on there, it won't pull up. So there's a, there's a suction that is created. So that means your chicken is not ready to flip. So I just leave it and let it cook, give it like, three minutes plus or minus so maybe it shouldn't be two it should be more like three or four and just let it cook so while that's cooking i'm going to bring you guys back over here to my main station 
and let you guys see what's going on. So we are done with this. So we're gonna just stick this in the soapy sink. And then we are done with our knife and our um, shears. We're gonna get rid of that. This is gonna go in our trash. I always put my knife to the side because I don't want it to get intermingled in the dishes and somebody say, I cut myself. All right, so that's a little safety thing. So let me tell you about a few other of my favorites is um, we're gonna show you the rock crock. So the rock crock is like stoneware on steroids. So how many of you have some stoneware? Give me some hands up if you got some stoneware. Tell me below um, if you've got stoneware, what do you cook on your stoneware? Are you doing chicken nuggets? Are you doing french fries? Are you roasting vegetables? Are you making breads? Are you making cookies? What are you doing on your stoneware? Please share right now um, below in the video what you're using your stoneware for. And um, I can't help it. I have to wipe this counter off, okay? Because the chicken was sitting near here, you know? It was on my mat. All right, so put that away. All right, so with stoneware, let me just show you a piece. This is the joy of being in my own kitchen. This is what stoneware looks like the more you use it, right? The more you use it, the browner it becomes. This is a beautiful large round stone with handles. All right, so what they did is stoneware on steroids is known as the rock crock. So this is a piece of clay that has a ceramic coating on it that makes this safe up to 752 degrees. Please tell me you're not cooking at 752 in your kitchen, okay? Or I'm gonna call the fire department. Um, what this makes this, what happens is, is because of this glaze, the ceramic glaze, it makes it safe on your stovetop, in your oven, in your, under your broiler, in your microwave, out on your grill, um, in the dishwasher for cleanup. And when I thought they couldn't come up with anything more, they added the slow cooker stand. So it makes your rock crock into a crock pot. This is amazing. You're totally wanna, gonna, gonna want to get this. This is the four quart capacity. Um, I make entire meals in here, one pot wonders right in here, and I still have leftovers, which is great for my family, so that we can have stuff the next day. So I love this, comes with a lid. You can upgrade to the bundle and save $30 when you get the whole set together. I know what you're thinking, Tiffany, I already have a crock pot. That's okay, donate it to someone in need and get this, because your crock pot can't do all the things that a rock crock can do. All right, so that is the rock crock. Let's go back to our girl pan. All right, so over here, our grill pan is just sizzling along, and um, I can, let's see, if that releases really easily. I'm putting the same amount of pressure, and it just release. So I'm gonna grab my tongs, and I'm just going to flip my chicken, okay? So this is still, let me just show you some safetyness. Let's use a, a pot holder, and we're just gonna take our press off. I'm gonna take our chicken, and I'm gonna flip. Oh my goodness, this smells so good. This might bring the teenager down looking for food, okay? So this is how I grill it like a girl, okay? Because you guys know in Virginia, it can be hot, cold, muggy, or buggy all in one day and get two inches of snow, just like we did last night. So this is how I grill in the house without having to go outside and lose eyelashes and arm hair to the gas grill. That's happened, okay? So I'm grilling it like a girl in the house. So there's my chicken. It's doing great right here on there. Now with the new cookware, um, not only does the handle come off for easy storage, but the whole thing, after you take the handle off, the whole pan and the press are dishwasher safe. Aren't those like the three best words ever? Dishwasher safe, D-W-S. Okay, so this is dishwasher safe, which is fabulous for cleanup, okay? So I love that I can, when I'm done, I just, you know, I'm gonna let it cool before I put it in my dishwasher and then I'm gonna do that. So let's give that another minute or two while it's sitting all right there. And let's just show you my, some of my other faves. Now, I wanna know how many of you have a magic wand in your kitchen? And no, that's not your husband cooking you dinner. That's one of these. All right, this is the mix and chop. Give me some um, hands up. Give me some, um, some Facebook blue um, hands if you've got one of these, okay? The mix and chop is awesome. There we go, I see one. Because when you do Taco Tuesday, or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, because we don't discriminate. We like tacos on any day that end in Y. You need a mix and chop. So you're gonna use it in your skillet as you move things around. Um, use it for your ground beef. Use it for your ground sausage, your ground turkey. Um, we use it to make guacamole. We use it to make like an egg salad. We use it for a lot of different things. This is nylon. It is not gonna scratch your cookware. So in addition to um, 
the grill pan. We also have a new line of cookware that is a stainless with a non-stick mesh right here so that you do not have to be scared to cook with stainless. I've always been really scared with stainless, but this has been amazing. So I like that the non-stick is on the inside. This is the 12 inch skillet. It does have a lid. Um, I've been using this quite a bit to make egg scrambles for my family. We take like, you know, five, six, seven, eight eggs, scramble them up in there with some sausage and pepper and jalapeno topped with cheese. And we have been going carbless on that breakfast right there. So I love this. This is a piece you're gonna want to have. Either you're gonna book a show to get it um, for your half price or you're just gonna add it to your cart right now. So I love this. All right, so I think our chicken is done. Let me um, bring it over to you. I'm just gonna turn my burner off, take, release my press. And then a lot of times what I do is I just take it and put it right in my batter bowl. All right, we'll let this cool over here. All right, so here's my batter bowl full of grilled chicken. Look at that steam, isn't it beautiful? Look at those beautiful grill marks. I hope you guys can see them. I know you can't smell them, but they're beautiful. All right, so you're gonna add this to your wish list: salad choppers. These are the things that are the most wrongly named things in the entire catalog because I hardly ever use them for salad. I use them so much for meat. So right now we're gonna use them for chicken. They're great for like a, a tenderloin, for a butt or a shoulder, anything like that. If your husband's doing a brisket or something outside. But after my chicken has been put in here and why it is still hot, I just grab my salad choppers and I just go to town on this chicken. So if you like chicken tacos, chicken enchiladas, chicken um, salad, chicken on your salad, um, this is these are great tools to have. Okay, so I wonder if I can get you guys a little closer without tipping you over. All right, there we go. So can you see this chicken? And how it just like, these are two Santuco knives on a hinge. These are part of our lifetime guarantee line, our cookware, our forge cutlery, and our salad choppers, our lifetime guarantee. And it just chops these up so nicely. And so there I've shred my chicken. I didn't have to wait for it to cool. I didn't use two forks and painless, painfully try to slice and dice that up. So it is ready to go. A lot of times I just let it cool. We'll throw this, you know, on soft tacos and make um, like a soft taco-y kind of fajita-y kind of thing. Um, but a lot of times, because I'm cooking it during the day while the kids are at school, and I've done, then I'm getting ready to do another set, I'll put this in the freeze refrigerator so when they come home and they're hangry, I can say, let's get some chicken out and we'll go ahead and make a quesadilla. Um, you guys know what I mean, right? The hangry. And if we give them something like crackers or a pop tart, they're turning into gremlins because there's no protein in that. They're gonna need protein. So that's why I always have chicken ready to go so that when they come in, I do not mind them making a snack with um, like making a little bit of chicken salad or making um, a quesadilla roll up with some cheese in it and some chicken because this is protein and this is gonna help them get through that. All right, or maybe we'll just jump right into dinner. So I love, love, love that. All right, so before you guys go, I wanna show you two other of my favorites. We covered the mix and chop, you gotta have that. We covered the rock crock. So let me talk to you about my boyfriend. This is Manuel otherwise known as the manual food processor. Who's got a Manuel at home? Tell me what you do with Manuel, okay? So at first glance, you're like, all right, what's so special? A um, Couple things that I like. The bowl and the blade are the two things that go in the dishwasher. All right, so dishwasher safe. Um, the blades are at three different levels, so things get moved around really nicely when they're in there. Um, you, when you put this in the dishwasher, here's a quick tip. If this is your top rack, put your blade in like that, put your bowl like this, so that when it is in the dishwasher and things move around, when you go to unload it, you don't accidentally grab that blade and cut yourself. This is your reminder. Oh my gosh, there's a blade underneath that bowl. All right, there's a little post in the bottom of the bowl. That's where the blade sits on. Then you take your plunger piece, you put that, whatever you're slicing and dicing, you put that right in there. You pop the handle and you slice and dice. Okay, so things I use this for. Um, of course, an awesome, sensational salsa for Taco Tuesday, right? Um, we can do a tomato-based 
um, salsa. We can do a pineapple based or a mango based if you want to just change that chicken up and do like a Jamaican jerk seasoning on there. Delicious. Um, if I need to hide vegetables from people, I put that them in here. Like I don't like big chunky onions. I even don't like big chunky diced tomatoes that come in the can. I put them back in here and break them up a few more times. Um, I can fit a dozen eggs in here and scramble them all at once for a breakfast casserole. Um, so I absolutely love Manuel. Um, you're just going to hand wash the bottom part here. Do not plunge this down in the sink. Um, but the other two pieces go in there. It does come with a bowl. So if you make a fantabulous um, salsa and you want to put it in your fridge and um, wait until party time, you can do that. Or if there's something left over, like, and you want to um, come back to it later, you can put it in the fridge with the lid and not with the blade. You can take the blade and the um, little plunger piece off. All right. So next up, last product we're going to talk about tonight is the veggie spiralizer. So anybody out there trying to eliminate carbs, are you trying to eat more vegetables? Do you like making your vegetables into fun shapes? Then you're probably going to want a veggie spiralizer. Um, the other night we took four zucchinis and we roasted them with just a little EVOO, a little bit of salt and pepper. We spiralized them so they came out as fettuccine, put them on the bar pan, put them in the oven, let them bake. And we had that with um, my husband made steak outside and it was so good. So I love being able to use this. Um, there's a little key slot in the back. So let me see. Oh, my, my guard is on backwards. All right. So if you do not use, if you do not put the little key in the slot, you see, it's just flat right there. You can see through that hole. So if you put like a solid veggie on there, like a zucchini and you crank the handle, it's going to come out in ribbons. So you'll see that in a picture I'll post later. If you put the key in, so let me grab the key out of this um, little safety holder here. All right, so when you have the key, you either have the fettuccine side or the spaghetti side, depending on um, your preference. You just slide it in the hole, you tighten it up, and then you crank. So with a solid veggie, you'll get your um, zoodles. So if you have done like, you know, your zucchini, you probably have seen this in the store. They sell spiralized zucchini in the store for like a package. It's like what, about that big? Maybe it's three or four cups. Um, that costs you what? $8.99, $9.99, $12.99. And then it goes bad in a, a day or two. So you need to use it right then. And, um, you know, it's going to be for one meal. This is going to last you so much longer, especially as the summertime comes and the zucchinis get bigger. I love that I can get more out of my zucchini as they get bigger. You can do your spaghetti swash. You can do cucumber. Um, I hollow out the bell peppers and I just um, use the standard blade and do the bell peppers and they come out in one long piece. Great for fajitas. I put an onion on there and as you spiralize it on the standard blade, it comes out in the ribbons that are really good if you want to do like the onion straws for burgers or um, if you just I add the onion to other things you know for the fajitas or to put on top of the meat outside or whatever but I absolutely love this and I am not a very big veggie person I'm trying to be a better veggie person so we've been eating more zucchini as noodles because zucchini takes on the flavor of whatever you're cooking it with so I put it in a, a chicken chili I put it in um Spaghetti, instead of having noodles, we use zoodles. Um, you can just, you can really add it to a lot of different things because it just takes on that flavor. So um, these are some of my favorite tools. I hope you've enjoyed our video tonight. Um, I'm really sorry you're not gonna be able to eat our wonderful chicken. Um, I'm gonna scroll back through all the comments here in a minute and answer any questions you had. Um, I do appreciate you commenting and telling me about the stoneware you have, what kind of tools you have at home, what you use them for. Sharing is always the best way to go. Sharing is caring. And and um, I hope you enjoyed coming to my kitchen tonight and seeing a little bit about how I make dinner. And um, guys, I'm just not really a good cook, but it makes it so much easier when you have really good tools. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll be looking for a little bit more posts to come tonight and, and some more tomorrow and the next day as we wrap up our online party. Thanks, guys. Have a great night.